the uh, program that you had mentioned to install? Yes. The server is, is that something you have to do immediately at home on your home computer or you can you just set it up an account that you can access access from any No, uh, th this is software that gets downloaded and installed to your computer. Um, the server, if you don't want to do that, your other option is wait until I have a server account um, for you on our server here. All right? So if you don't want to go and install that software, um, I, sh I would hope by Wednesday to have an account uh, installed to, uh, for, for each of you and set up for each of you on the server here, which means all you'd have to do is then log on to that server, copy your files over, and then you can test them on that server. So that's your other option. Okay. Yes? Is, uh, is your server located at LCCC? Yes. Uh, say um, like you wanted to get a server somewhere else. You know how much that would cost to carry data? Um, depending on, on the requirements, it, it can be relatively inexpensive. Um, I've seen... The one package that, that I, I use a service called Hosting Matters for for uh, for that, and I think their lowest one is like six bucks a month, so it's, it's not particularly expensive. You might even find some that are even cheaper than that. And that's pretty uh, durable, I can say. Like it doesn't have much offline tag. I've had very good luck with Hosting Matters. Yes. Yeah. They they and, and they've they've worked. Uh, they've uh, they've worked to resolve any problems that I've run into. Uh, pretty quickly. Yeah, the different pack. Yeah, typically the different packages will have different limits as far as the bandwidth that it would allow and, and so on. So is that like saying you can only have so many people view this page this month? Is that, is that it? It's, it's more in terms of the number of bytes that you deliver. So you might you might have you know two gigabyte limit, and and once they re, once. You, once that server has served more than that, it won't allow anymore. So you, the, more, the more people that access, the more you actually have to pay? To yeah. Deliver. Yeah. And, you know, even the higher end ones, you know, for a lot of the smaller projects I do, the, the $6 one, I haven't had anyone tap out of their, their thing anyhow, you know, and they get a few hundred people visiting their site every month, you if know. You're like a store or something, then you expect a couple thousand a month, and you're going to have to pay a lot of money. You have to pay more money. It's still not a lot of money. What about like making a server at your house? Like I, I know it's complicated, and you actually like, say you got Cox Cable. Right. They don't like that. Right. So would it actually be cheaper to like try to do that? Uh, you know that that's one of those things that I would avoid doing simply because just things like you know security patches and and um, stuff like that and keeping current with that. It's like, go with the people whose job it is to do that. You know what I mean? It's yeah. worth paying a little bit to know that this is their, their, their lifeblood. This is their livelihood, you know, and if there's a problem, they can, they can, you know, they can, they provide good support. So whoever you look at, you know, look to see what folks are saying about their support too. Um, it's not just, you know, it's not just a plan, but, but the support as well. Um, if you had a static IP address, then yeah, you and and you did the appropriate things to allow requests in on port eighty or eighty eighty, yeah. whichever one. Yeah. Then yeah, then you could set up a server in your house and do that. But Just, yeah, it's going to be a problem with all those hackers. And yeah, it, exactly. It's, it's it's like one of those like yeah, you can't, but why bother? You know, yeah. is it you know. I don't know, maybe you're different than me, maybe you're more mechanical, but like, it's like changing your own oil, yeah. you know? It's like, yeah, I, I probably could do it, but you know what, I'll go and pay 20 bucks, let some joker do it for me, you know? Not, not you know, not the dirt joker, but you know, let some other person do it for me, all right? It's definitely um, something that should be talked about, like, uh, near the end of the classes for mobile and Android and all that, it's, you know, people actually want to take it seriously and maybe make a business on it. Yeah, yeah, that, uh, yeah, that's definitely, that, that's, that's true. Other questions? You had um, mentioned
mentioned, if, like I said, you're going to set up this PHP on, uh, I should mean the server mm -hmm. account for on LCC. Right. But you said for those of us who might not have used PHP before, we have the option to try a mobile and desktop page right now that could be yeah. benefited. Uh, yeah, in, in, other words, in other words, let's say you wanted to work on, what is it, Lab 4? Your, your next lab today. Okay. Let's say you want to work on that today. What you could do is you could follow the idea um, of, of taking a mobile first design strategy. All right? And you could develop a mobile page, then go and develop a whole second desktop version of the page. All right? And then just be confident that at some point we'll be able to take the code to do the switching between them and tack it on to the, to the PHP one. So, yeah, you could develop a separate HTML file for the mobile and a separate for the, the full version of the site. Okay. Um, well, I'm curious about here, and I don't know if this is a hybrid or if this mm -hmm. is exactly how it's labeled, but what about these sites that, whether you're on mobile, where you're on a full screen, as you literally stretch the browser window, it, it literally cascades or condenses in a series of steps. In other words, it's it will realign not just at one part, but like sometimes at four, three or four stages, where you can, as you uh, on a full screen, as you're squishing that browser window, it's reorganizing in several different steps as you, you know, elongate or stretch well, the page. I'm try, is that... Going back to the... going. I mean, we, we address that going back like the first or second class, I, I thought, maybe the second class, where there's some JavaScript on there on the resize. On the resize then, if you look at that code, I'm doing certain things. I don't know. I'm making the one thing disappear or I'm, I'm doing that. You certainly could do any other operation that you wanted to at that point. And you could set multiple breakpoints to do a different thing at one size and a different thing at another size and a different thing at a third size. So if you simply extend that example, um, you know, that's what that's what it does. You know? But if you have a page that is literally that adapted both ways, does it necessarily have two separate uh, well, style again, sheets. Is it really just one style sheet that works both ways? Or? Well, again, consider this. What if, what if they're on an ancient browser or an ancient mobile device that doesn't have JavaScript enabled? Okay. That dies. Okay. Secondly, at a certain point, depending on your content and depending on your user goals, it's easier to simply create two pages than to create um, one page that is mega adaptable. So it's your job as a designer. Can you write pages that are adaptable? Yeah. We talked about a variety of techniques that you could do. Uh, media queries, JavaScript, all right? And those are tools in your arsenal that we've practiced the past couple of classes, all right, and past couple of assignments. So what we're doing now is we're introducing another tool. Is any one of them going to be used all the time? No. You need to look at the content and you need to look at your user goals to determine is it worth it to try to write a, a, a page that is completely adaptable so I only have to write one? Or is that harder than just, you know what, I'm going to create two different pages, put some content in an include file and be done with it. And not have to mess with, with that. Um, again, that, that's the call that you make as a designer. Uh, the, the idea here is that we give a variety of tools and in any given situation, you know, part of your job is to figure out which of the which tools is, is which tools are most appropriate for a given task. Yeah. So is, is it the make sure I'm phrasing this right? Is it more of the media query or the PHP when you let's say have it not feed off of a common HTML, but you literally have two distinct, different, massively far apart pages based upon how people are looking at it. I mean, well, uh, that that's what this example was, right? 
there's two pages. There's index.php and there's mobile.php. If you go to index.php on a mobile device, you get redirected to mobile.php. If you pull up index.php on a desktop, you stay on index.php. So yeah, that can, again, like everything else, that can be done a couple different ways, but the way that we're talking about here, especially given the, the, the potential for lack of JavaScript support, is we're doing that on the server. The request comes in, we look at, and we decide, are we going to stay on this page, or are we going to send them to mobile.php? And then mobile.php is the wildly different one. Now again, even in the case of wildly different pages, there's probably some level of consistency you want. So therefore, I'm going to use the same style sheet on both. Right? I have on the mobile one, I'm sorry, on the full version, I have two style sheets, a base and a full. On the mobile one, I simply use the base. But the idea is I'm using the same base for both. And for the desktop one, I'm then tacking on the one with the media query. All right? uh, I'm also sharing content by putting it in an include file. So that way, um, if, um, you know, if there's content that is common to both the mobile, which again, typically, you know, even if it's radically different, there's going to be some stuff that's in common. Right? You know? It's not like Amazon is a bookstore on, on a mobile device or on a desktop and a, a pet store on a, on a mobile device, right? It's still a bookstore, right? Um, so there's going to be some functionality typically in common. And for that, you can use some techniques, including with PHP, the include file to, to have the common code. But the key is the switching. And that's what, why we look at the user agent right off the bat and either keep them on the page that we're on or send them to the new page, the different page. Other questions? Are there any sites that you would recommend that in terms of any other additional reference files, demos, that to follow even deeper into this? Uh, like I said, what, what do you mean deeper? Um, like I said, sometimes, like I said, with demo how-tos, they focus on just the mechanics of just this versus, you know, a, a real site where you got tons and tons and tons of advertisements to try to shift, sit through. So I'm just trying to, like I said, look for any concentrated ways that... Well, the idea of switching between the two pages is simply this block of code. That's as, that's as complicated as it gets. All right? That's it. So that's the code that, that you use to switch between it. Now... The question is like, what about the rest of the stuff? Well, the rest of the stuff is, is web design, right? In other words, anything that you would do designing any page, you're doing, and you do it on the full version, you do it on uh, a create a separate mobile version. And you apply all the techniques of web design that you've learned previously, and you add on to that the notion that we had about mobile first and adaptive and responsive and all that. So. Um, if you're asking, are there resources that talk more about PHP? Absolutely. This isn't a PHP class, so we're really scratching the surface uh, on that. But the technique specific to mobile development of redirecting and having two versions of the site, there's the code to redirect. Then the code of developing two versions is just basic web design, right? You, you, you code, you know, you code the one optimized for desktop, you code the one optimized for mobile. And then you, you have code in one that chooses between the two and switches you to that. All right. Again, like I said, because the user agent can be spoofed and because that this isn't foolproof, 
we're still going to use those responsive techniques in the mobile first basis to go and create this. That way, or even if someone wants to access the full site from the mobile, we want to give them that option, and then we use the same stuff that we've done the first few weeks as a class. You know, media queries to, all right, give them that base CSS, and oh yeah, you know, if they're running a, a larger uh, a window, then, you know, give them this extra uh, set of style rules. But yeah, the rest of it's just, just web design, you know. No, you can't grab PHP because remember that doesn't get delivered to you. Yeah, but you can grab uh, the JavaScript. You can see all the variables. I mean, it comes in handy a lot, especially if you're doing development for, say, you want to automatically put in data for web pages. It definitely comes in handy to do that. You know what I'm saying? Um, yeah, I mean, I, I'm always looking at the source files and trying to reverse engineer from things like that. to reverse engineer, just copy and paste, just take it. I mean, everybody else does it. I mean, as long as you're not like taking their, I say what, content, that's probably illegal. And you can take your CSS and put it on your own page. Because that's just regular, what, designing? Um, that's an interesting question. Um, uh, um, I would say to, to look up specific techniques and how they do it via JavaScript and all that, that's probably okay. To wholesale imitate the look of a site is probably not okay. Yeah, I mean, like, yeah. grab like certain parts that you Yeah, to look at snippets of code and see yeah. how they do that, but the wholesale do that. Um, I, I guess what I'm saying is, is you know, there's nothing, uh, there's nothing like just getting your hands dirty and, and playing with it. So we have the example of code that executes when you resize a window, start with that and start playing around with it. Um, it very well could be that you just need more practice with JavaScript to, to understand how to do certain things in JavaScript. All right, so take that example and that where I go, where I well, I've done a, did a couple things. One one case I hit a div, and one case I uh, uh, made a div disappear. I think I don't know. I did several different things. Take that example and play with it. See if you can tweak it to do different stuff than what I did. And then see if that gets to be, um, to, to match your needs. You know, for example, you know, you could, um, you know, if the screen width is a certain width, make the width of your, uh, you know, let's say you have eight divs side by side. If you're, uh, if the width of your screen is, let's say, certain wide, certain width, you know, put them all side by side, all the way across. If it crosses a break point, then maybe put it in two rows of four. And how'd you do that? Well, you'd set the width to be um, 25%, and that would do the width that way. If it reaches a certain point, then set the width maybe to 50% of each, and that will go down. The idea of JavaScript, again, is you can point to anything on that page, all right, and reset the properties. You can make it visible, you can make it invisible, you can set the width, background color, anything you need to. What I gave is I gave the hook. In other words, I, in my example, I set um, to, to connect my function with the action of resizing the screen. So when I resize, well, let's, let's bring up that example. Again, to refresh our memories.
this page. We have this. As we resized it, at a certain point we made it disappear. thing about JavaScript is JavaScript consists of a couple different things. First thing it does, it, uh, first thing that it, that it is, is there's user events that, that fire off. All right, that's what triggers or initiates the JavaScript. Um, then there's the JavaScript language itself, in other words, the syntax of if statements and other statements. Lastly, there's the DOM, and the DOM document object model, which allows you to point to something on the screen and change it. So, let's see what we have here. I have, on load, I call my redisplay function, and when the page is resized, I call the uh, redisplay function. That redisplay function does some gyrations to come up with a width. All right? Then based on the width, if it's less than 400, I go and I make that less important one invisible. If it's greater than 400, I make that visible. I then go and play around with the width of the screen to set the background of important to some shade of gray. All right. Now, there's a lot of different things I could do uh, with this. Um, I'm just doing some examples. And in this case, I only have one breakpoint. I only have when the screen gets to be 400. But you definitely could do something where as, you know, if it is less than 800, do this. If it's less than 400, do this. If it's less than 200, do this. So you could put as many different breakpoints as you can in there. All right? So what this is, is this isn't going to do everything, of course, but it does have the hook to say when the page is resized, fire off the script. Inside the script then you can do whatever testing that you want to based on the width and change everything that you need to based on that. So you should be able to take this and I encourage you to do it. If you dream, if you dream up some functionality, try to take this and adapt it to do what, what you said. Alright? Uh, or what, what you've dreamt up or, or you know what, you, what you've seen on another site. You know? You could easily make, you know, um, I'm trying to look at some others as well because I was playing uh, with uh, the colors and introducing a picture and whatnot, and I was just it just you know, just fell off a cliff. Well, that's why we have to ask a question, right? And as far as playing around with others, you know, um, you can you know you can look at a bunch of examples superficially, or you can really dig deep into one example and figure out how it works and, and go from that. All right? So um, if you have questions, by all, mean ask, uh, by all means ask them. All right? Because probably the problem comes into, depending on your familiar with, with, with JavaScript, is figuring out what the DOM expressions are to point to something on the page and changing it. All right? Or maybe even with the syntax of, of the JavaScript. So by all means, bring those questions so that I can take a look at them and, and try to give you a hand with them. Other questions? Or string array 